Howdy guys. Hope everyone's doing uh, well and staying safe and healthy and all that stuff. Um, in this video, what I wanted to do is talk about how we can export out all of our multi-parm uh, data here to a JSON file. All right, just kind of adding on to all the other JSON exporting um, tricks and tips that we've been doing lately uh, in our Houdini uh, Python projects video series. And so what I have here is I've gone ahead and set up an HDA and I um, created a multi-parm which allows me to um, add as many boxes and place them wherever I want and color them whatever I want on a per instance basis, right? So if I add another one, you can see I get another box in here. And what I want to do is just move this guy over here. Maybe this is where I want uh, this particular box to go. And then I can also control uh, the Z position as well. And we can also um, give it a custom color. Now, the cool thing about this is what if I want to use this data somewhere else? Or let's say I want to you know, save it out so I can re-import it somewhere else um, in a different HIP file or a different HDA. Um, basically, you know, reset all this up um, in a different HDA. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to cover how to export all this to a JSON file. So I set this up here so it exports to a JSON file. If I go over to code now, you can see I have that new entry right here. And so I'm exporting out all the blocks from the multi-parm into a JSON file. So I can save all that data out. It's very useful. All right, so um, yeah, let's get into uh, recreating all this now. Okay, so let me hide this guy here for now and let's create a new geometry object. And I'm just gonna call this my multi-parm uh, test two. And what I wanna do is go make a digital asset out of this. And I'm just gonna leave it out with the default name for now. Uh, this is really just an example here. So I'm just going to save it into um, this particular HDA folder. All right, so I hit accept and accept. There we go, we'll just draw our spare parameters because we don't need them. And let's hide our default UI like so, there we go. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do uh, is I wanna set up a couple folders. So this first one is going to be the export folder, uh, which is gonna have a button in it that allows us to execute the export and then we also want a, a file directory so the location of where we want to send the file so i'm going to call this file dir and we'll call this uh, file directory for the label and for the button we'll say export um, data and we'll say export data there we go cool all right, so then the next step that we want to do is create a, a multi-parm block. So to do that, you just drag out a new folder and you set the folder type to multi-parm block list. And this basically will set it up as a multi-parm. You'll get a different look here where you can go and start to add instances. Now, because we haven't um, created the definition, right, for what this multi-parm is, you're not going to get anything when you hit this little plus button. But now we have a multi-parm in place. What I want to do is I want to uh, name this to something like blocks. You can name it whatever you want. So we'll call it blocks. Uh, it's important to name this just so you can get access to that stuff. So now it's called blocks. All right, and in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a uh, float vector two and a color to this. These will be our two properties that allow us to control the position and the color. So I'm gonna say position and this will be color like so. Very cool. All right, so with that in place, you'll notice now when you hit apply that we get a little hashtag at the end of here. And that's because all these guys will get a particular name, um, a sort, I should say an ID associated to them. And so this hashtag really is just a placeholder for uh, whatever instance number this is, right? So now when we hit a plus over here, we have one instance. So this hashtag will be replaced with a, a value of one. All right, so this is position one, color one. And then if we add another one, we have position two and color two. Okay, so you can get rid of these guys by hitting the little X button. You can also add ones, um, but I tend to stay away from that. I just use this guy right up here just because I like to you know, keep them all stacked appropriately. All right, so with that done, let's go and set up our network inside of our node. All right, so to do this, we're gonna use a for each number loop. All right, this will allow us to control what happens with each of those particular blocks. Uh, I'm just going to feed in a null to start with, and then I'm going to create a box over here. And what I'm going to do is add in a merge node. And so we'll merge in a box every single time we create a new instance. All right. Now, currently, the for loop is set up with the default of iterations 10. And we actually want to come up here and we want to copy this blocks 
ID right here, that number. So I'm just going to say copy parameter by right clicking on it and selecting copy parameter. And then we're going to uh, paste relative reference. That gives us the amount of iterations. All right. So um, at this point, what I want to do is I want to um, allow the user to control the position. So this is going to become our position node. And we also want to control the color. So I'm going to drop down the color node here. And now we need to set up some expressions in here, some H script expressions in here to um, actually control it. So we need to get the values from each one of these instances. So that way we have control over each box that we create. All right. And to do that, we actually need to set up our expressions. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say CH, all right, for channel. And then we need to do the string cat function. This allows us to concatenate two strings together. And right off the bat, we know that we want to get for this one, the position. So we're going to get position. And now you'll notice that we have access to position one X. All right. So that position one X is this position one right here. All right. You'll notice that Houdini will add on that one when you search through the list and this little um, IntelliSense stuff right, right here. So we have position one X, position one Y. So let's do this. We need to select position one, but we can't do that straight up because we need to actually get the iteration from our uh, loop count right up here, or for each count. So I'm going to call this my loop data. And then what we need to do is inside of the string cat function, we need to get that iteration value. So we need to reference the loop data node, then get the iteration value, and then we need to add one onto it. So plus one. And now right off the bat, that's not going to actually uh, work. And that's because if we actually middle mouse this, we're just getting zero, right? And if we actually come over here, um, it says it can't evaluate the expression. There's a bracing error in there. So let's actually take a look at this really quick here. And this guy is going to, so we need to get rid of this guy right there. First off, there we go. All right. So we got rid of the air. Let's set an extra parenthesis there. Now what's happening is it can't actually access the value because what we're actually evaluating to is just position uh, one, right? So this detail expression here is returning to us a value of one because we only have one instance. And so really this, um, string cat function will evaluate to position one, where when you saw it, when we were using the IntelliSense, it was position one X, which means we need to do another string cat. So we need to do string cat again around this whole thing here, like so. And we need to add on the X like that. Hit apply. And there we go. And accept. So now if we were to go up here and test our X direction, you can see we have control over that. So a little confusing at first, um, you just have to do two string cats for this particular type of parameter, the float uh, vector two. And then for the Z direction, I'm going to use the Y value. So that position Y. So now I should have control over both the, the Z position here yep, and the X position. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to copy this. I'm just going to copy this because I don't want to have to type that all again. And we just need to get the RGB values from that color parameter. So rather than position, we're going to do color. And this is going to become R like so. All right, so now we have control over the red channel. Let's copy this and we'll just replace this with the G and we'll replace this guy with the B channel. There we go. So now we can control the color, right? So I can make this guy a blue. Awesome. So now we have control over, you know, all of our instances of the boxes. So I can put these guys wherever I want now and color them whatever I want as well. So let's see one more instance here. Just so we have three and I'm just going to move this guy over here and maybe we can do this like that. And then we'll assign like a green color to this. Awesome. So now we have our HDL set up. So always a good idea to save your node type at this point. And what we need to do now is um, write a little bit of Python to get this um, to export to a JSON file now. All right. So let's actually go and just assign our file directory up here. Uh, I'm going to come up here and I am going to uh, select a folder that I created on my desktop. You can send the file wherever you want. So you can see now we have the file directory. 
And now what we need to do is we need to start doing our Python. So the first good step for this is to create a, go to the scripts tab and create a Python module. And we're going to create our first function. Well, actually, we're going to only create one function. And I'm going to call this uh, export block data. And we're going to pass in our quarks dictionary so we can have access to a bunch of information about this HDA. All right, so in here, I'm just going to put a print statement in here to make this work. Or I'll just uh, type in working, like so, just to make sure that um, I'm actually firing this off with the button. So then in our parameters tab, I'm going to go to the button now, and I'm going to make sure that my callback script is set to Python. And I'm actually going to utilize the who.phm. All right, so that's a new one. Uh, I found that in the documentation. It's just a shorthand for the uh, who.pwd dot hm function, right? So it's just a faster way to do this. And then what we need to do is just call our export block data. So we're going to call export block data and pass in our quarks. That's a you know, global dictionary that uh, side effects or Houdini creates for us. Awesome. So with that done, let's go test this out. So I have my Python shell open. And if you don't have it open, you can always um, just go to a new pad uh, pane type here and just open the Python shell from there. And you can do that anywhere. So wherever you want to put your Python shell. All right, let's hit export data. And you can see we are working. Awesome. All right, so hopefully that made sense. Uh, I'm just using the new this new function. You might have seen if you watched my other videos. I've been using the who.pwd. So I just uh, discovered this recently. Awesome. So let's go back to our scripts tab and start typing in our code. So the first thing that I know I'm going to need is the JSON module because we're going to be um, exporting to a JSON file. And then what I want to do is get access to the parameters on this HDA. So I need to get this particular instance of the HDA. And to do that, I'm going to type out a variable name HDA. And then I'm going to use utilize that quarks dictionary and pull out the node option from there. So that gives me the um, HDA. And you can verify this if you print the HDA.name like so. So let's hit apply and uh, hit my export button. And it's not parent, it's print. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's hit that button one more time. There we go. So we have multi parm test too. Awesome. All right, so the next thing we're going to need is I need to know the number of blocks or number of instances right here, right? So I want to get this number. So that's pretty easy to do. All we need to do is say HDA um, dot parm. And we want to get the value from that uh, blocks folder. All right, so we use this blocks name right there. And then we'll pump that guy right into there. And I want to say eval as int. So I'm, I know that I'm evaluating this to an integer value. So let's hit apply. And let's do a print uh, num. And apply one more time. Hit export data. And we get three. Very cool. All right, so the next thing we need to know is um, our instances. So all of these particular parameters here are just instances uh, from our initial definition right here, right? And so to access that inside of Python, inside of Houdini here, all we need to do is say hda.parm and make sure you spell it correctly. And we want to get the instances from our blocks folder. And we just use the multi-parm instances function. So multi parm instances function. All right. So if I were to go and print out my instances now, you will get a bunch of data. So let's do this. We'll say export uh, data. And there you go. We now have access to all of the individual parameters. So position one X, position one Y, so on and so forth. Cool. So now we can actually loop through all this stuff. But before we do that, before we get into all the loops and stuff that we need to put in here, uh, let's get the directory. All right. So we're going to say hda.parm and we're going to get uh, blocks. Or actually, not blocks. We're going to get uh, Filder. That's what I called it, I believe. Yeah, Filder. Very cool. And I'm going to say uh, eval as string, like so. And let's just uh, verify that uh, that is working. So print dir. We'll hit our button up here. Yeah, so we get our location. Very cool. All right, so now we can work on our loops. So the way this works is we need to uh, loop through the number of instances that we have. So we're going to use 
utilize this number option here because I want to loop through each instance or each block and basically sort out the data. So I need to do a for i in range and that range is going to be our num like so. All right, so now we're looping through each one of those guys. And then each time we loop, I want to say for instance, I want to check the instance in the instances like so. So for each one of the instances, um, that's right here. So these are all the instances right here in this, in this list. We're going to look at each instance and I actually need to check the name to, to verify that it's a part of the current block that we're, we're on. Okay. And so to do that, we are going to then in that instance, we're going to check to see if the instance dot name, if it has the current I value, the current iterator, then we're going to, we're going to keep it right. So we're going to say, uh, if instance dot name dot find like, so, and I need to do it str I plus one. So we convert it to a string, um, is greater than or equal to zero like so then we can um, get the value. So we're going to say name is equal to instance dot name. And the value is going to be equal to the instance dot uh, eval. So just a generic eval because we might have strings and floats and ints and all of this. And <clears throat> I really just need a generic way to get the value out of that. All right. So with that done, uh, let's, let's go and verify this. So I'm going to say print, uh, we're going to say name, plus let's do colon there with a space plus a value. All right. And then at the very bottom here, let's go down here really quick. I just want to add an empty space. So I'm going to say print and we're going to do a couple dots, then a backslash n for a new line. I just want to see each individual blocks uh, data. I don't want to see all the, the blocks. All right. So let's make some space over here in our Python shell and hit export data. And, oh, we need to make sure we actually export or just print this to a string. There we go. All right, let's hit export data. Well, there you go. So now you can see we have individual blocks. So we're getting each instance, the data from each instance there. So we have all the ones, all the twos and all the threes. Very cool. All right. So now that we've got that, it's time to export this out to a JSON file. All right. So uh, we need to create our data block or data uh, dictionary, I should say. So this is what I usually do for all this. And so I'm going to put in a first entry called blocks, and this is going to be equal to um, a uh, empty array, basically. And then we need another type of uh, data block here, and I'm going to call this block data. All right. So th and this is going to be equal to an empty dictionary. That's the curly braces. So then we need to fill our block data with all this values or all these um, values here. So I'm going to say uh, block data under block data. There we go. And the name is going to be name and it's going to be equal to value like so. Let's get rid of our, all of our prints here. We don't need those anymore. And then once we fill our block data with um, a parameter at the very end here for each, basically for each of those loops there. All right. What I want to do is I want to um, append it to the data dictionary. So I'm going to say data uh, blocks dot append. And we want to append our block data that we just created. There we go. All right. So then at the very end here, let's uh, just print out our data just to verify that we're actually getting a bunch of data there. All right. And so let's make some more space here in our Python shell and do export data. And look at that. We now have in each array, we have all of the data that we need on a per block basis. Very cool. So now we need to export this to a uh, JSON file. And so to do that, <clears throat> I'm going to create a, a path based off of our dir. So we're going to say dir plus then whatever, you know, file name you want to give it. And obviously you can, you can come up here and uh, create another a string parameter so you can let the user uh, determine the name of the file. In this case, um, I just want to, I'm just getting this up and running. So I'm going to call this multiparm um, blocks dot JSON. So I'm just going to hard code it in there for now. All right. And then we need to create our JSON data. So we're going to say JSON data is equal to um, JSON dot dumps. And we are going to put in 
we're going to dump in our data. I'm going to change the indent to equal to four. And we also need to sort our keys. So let's do sort keys is equal to true, just so it's uh, readable. And then finally, we need to write the file. So we're going to say with uh, open. All right, so that's how we open a new file. Uh, we're going to uh, send in the path and we're going to set it to write. So two quotation marks, single quotes and a, a W. And we're going to say as F. So we're going to use this function inside of this F variable here. And then all we need to do is say F dot write and we'll write our JSON data to that file. And with that, that should be everything. It looks good. All right, so apply. And let's go and test this out now. Hit export data. And let's go find our folder on the desktop and open that up inside of Visual Studio Code. Yeah, so we have multipar and block. Let's open that up. And there we go. We now have our three blocks written out to a JSON file from our multipar. And just to verify, let's add one more instance there. So I don't need this guy anymore. So apply and accept. Let's add one more. And let's uh, move it around over here somewhere. Let's put it over there. We'll give it like a pink color. And then hit export data. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And there you go. So we have the, uh, the fourth instance right there. All right. So that's basically how that works. That's how you get access to uh, the multi-parm um, instances and how you can control it on a per block basis. All right. So hopefully you guys liked the video. Thanks so much.